Hey folks, it's Marvin Cash, the host of the Articulate Fly, and we're back with another Tip of the Mitt Fishing Report with Brian Kuzminski of True North Trout. How you doing, Brian? Marvin, I am excellent. How are you? I was happy to escape from Michigan about uh, a week ago uh, and not have to use an arc. You you mean you're happy because stuff was happening up here? Well, I was afraid I was going to sleep in the airport, so. Yeah, it's always good to visit. It's always good to get back home. Yeah, and you know, it's that funny thing, right? When you're like flying through Chicago in the summertime is such a crapshoot with the thunderstorms. Right. Yeah. So uh, I took a quick look at your weather and, you know, I know you guys cooled off. You're heating back up again. We were talking, you're going to cool off again. You're going to get a fair amount of precipitation. So what do you expect to see on the water? It's going to be, it's, it's a tough call right now. I've been talking to a lot of other buddies and some don't believe that the manistee has seen the hex. We had a daytime hex emergence last week, Monday or Tuesday. We had a nice, long, steady rain and warm enough temperatures that bugs came off and fish were feeding. But I don't think the full-on hex hatch has happened on the manistee. It is all but over on the Asable, and there's a few other cooler northern Michigan rivers that we fish that still see hex. Oh, through the majority of July, I'm going to go on one of those tonight, but they're also so spread out and they're in such slow, cold water that the fish aren't easy to key on where they're going to rise next. I was on the river last night and I saw a million husks, exuvia everywhere and very few duns. I didn't stay out till three in the morning to see if there was a spinner fall, but I bet you that will happen tonight. So we'll see if my clients have the the stamina and the casting ability to do it all night long in the dark, it's not a joke. It's its a true thing. Everybody comes up here and they're like, let's go night fishing. Let's go catch some big fish. And uh, it becomes 11 o'clock at night and they're kind of done. But it just gets, start- <laughs> it just gets started, you know, these later days. Yeah, absolutely. It's funny because, you know, so since I was out there about two weeks ago, you know, with your northern latitude and being so far in the eastern time zone, I mean, it's I mean, you can fish and see like legitimately see until probably 1030 quarter to 11. Exactly. And then once your eyes adjust, you can still see pretty well with the ambient light until, you know, one or two in the morning. And it's if you're using the reflection in the river and everything else. It's, it becomes a a difficult game, but you know, if the hex don't happen, tie in a mouse. It's, this is our next season. It, it pretty much is goes streamer, Hendrickson, Drake, sulfurs, isos, hex and mouse. If it doesn't happen. And then our really next big season, if you're looking for the hatch would be the trico. And then we get excited about the hopper season. Got it, which is a perfect segue into our question. Alec reached reached out because he must be somewhere in Michigan where the hex hatch is winding down, and he wanted to get your thoughts on hopper patterns and small streamer patterns. Hoppers, um, it's tough to beat Amy's aunt. Um, I love that little guy, and I, I like it in the purple, and I like it in the green. Chernobyls are always good, and you can put on a bigger chubby Chernobyl in like a salmon fly color and ski skate that across the water at night in Michigan for the stonefly. People don't realize that that happens after dark and you will often see larger stoneflies over deposit about the same time that we're sitting around waiting for hex. So if you're paying attention, throw a big chub Chernobyl on there. And I'm talking like an eight or a 10 doesn't have to be a monster, but a big enough fly to get their attention and you can move it and wake it. Very, very cool. And what about on the small streamer front? Small streamers, what I, I really like, and I'm tying a couple right now because as we get closer to fall, a classic black ghost or a coachman with a white marabou wing, I think a, a marabou coachman imitates any one-inch minnow out there. You can throw that with a five-weight. You can really throw it with a four if you had to. And there isn't a fish out there that doesn't eat a one-inch minnow. You know, if you, you, if you bring a fish home and open up its belly, usually a brook trout from Canada will have about 10 to 15 one-inch chubs inside of it, or darters, or dace, or whatever your your main forage fish is. Bigger fish will eat a one-inch minnow all day long. Yeah, it's funny you say that, because one of my secret weapon streamers is a gray ghost. Ghosts are they're magical. They're just, they're classical. They've been around for 100 years, and they work. 
Yeah, they work like a champ. And you know, folks, we love questions at the Articulate Fly. You can email them to us or send them to us on our Facebook or Instagram page. And if we read your question, I'll send you some Articulate Fly swag, and then we will enter into a drawing for something cool at the end of the season. And I have to remember to give a shout out to our friends at Norvice who generously sponsor this fishing report. And folks, you owe it to yourself to head over to www.nor-vice.com and check out all of their cool stuff. The most notable thing we talked about on the last fishing report is they've reloaded their stock of their new shank jaws. And it's probably the most versatile jaw in their arsenal. And you owe it to yourself to go over there and uh, take a look. Um, Brian, have you been spinning anything up here in the last two weeks on your Norvice? Uh, I did a couple of those chubby Chernobyls just because I didn't have anything in my box that fit what I saw on the water the night before. And I, you got me thinking now I need to start tying some of those coachman, white coachman streamers. And uh, it's it's a great fly and it, it's easy to tie, whip one up on the vise. It's a magical, when you spin that Norvice and just tap it with the dubbing on the, the thread, it grabs it and makes it the tightest dubbing you can possibly run. It's It's, it's magical. Yeah, that's awesome. And before I let you hop, because I know you're literally, I'm catching you as you're getting ready to pop out the door with the thermos of coffee. Uh, why don't you Just let folks... the coffee. We're ready to roll. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're ready to rock. Why don't you let folks know where they can find you so they can book in fish with you this season? You can find True North Trout on Facebook, Instagram, and www.truenorthtrout.com. Happy to entertain any questions and take you out. The fall streamer fishing is starting to get booked up, and we're looking at getting people on the water September and October. Yeah, well, there you go. Well, listen, folks, you know, you owe it to yourself, particularly if you're able to take this week off after the 4th to get out there and catch a few. Tight lines, everybody. Tight lines, Brian. Thank you. Have a great one. You too.